Awesome. Uh, the recording has started and that means we can go ahead and get going. So let's start now with the opening statements. So each candidate will have up to two minutes to give a brief statement. Uh, candidates can use this time to discuss how they got started in GOSH uh, and reiterate key points from their candidate statements. Um, I will notify you. I will send you a message uh, via chat when there are 10 seconds from when you're 10 seconds away from the two minute mark. Um, and I will tell each candidate when it's their turn to go in order of how they appear on my screen. Um, cool. So if everyone is ready to go, I will go ahead and get started with Anna. If you would like to give your candidate statement first, you're the first person on my screen. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for, uh, to whoever nominated me. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, even though I have to admit that um, the experience hasn't been as broad as many of you here. I've had several years of experience with the GOSH community and I've been very much involved. Um, I had an incredible opportunity to be part of the gathering uh, last year held here in Panama, Panama Republic, which was incredible for me. It was an amazing experience and I'm basically very happy and grateful for meeting a lot of you. Um, that gathering for me was I see it as a big success um, and I'm proud to be part of it. So having that in experience, I realize that I can provide um, support to the community, to especially for the future gatherings that you're trying to, to plan. I feel like um, the skills that I possess, that I have, it can be helpful. Um, it can be taken for the next gatherings, um, also for other planning um, activities that you may need or have. Um, I know that um, I've, been th I've been reading through the statements of the other persons that are uh, also trying to be in the council. And I noticed that there is a lot of brain power here. So I'm very happy to leave that to somebody else. And from me, you can take like my planning skills, my coordination skills. Um, I work great in teams, uh, with the team. So I just feel like uh, having consideration the past year gathering, you can take me, like you can take advantage of my skills. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, next I have on my screen is Carl. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. And I would like, also like to salute the person or persons that nominated me. My name is Carl Kadu. I am a professional. I'm professionally working as a, a science communicator. I basically work with scientists. I'm not a scientist myself, but uh, I'll I find joy in working with the scientists in supporting them to articulate their work with the different stakeholders, especially policymakers and, and the general public. So for the last five, 12 years, that's what I've been doing. Um, I was introduced to the to OSH in 2019 after attending the Africa OSH Summit in Tanzania and then I was introduced to uh, to Gosh. Um, by then, I was working on open supporting an open science project within Uganda that eventually spread to Kenya and I think South Sudan. So um, I've always liked to work with innovators, and uh, I believe this I arrived at a uh, an appropriate community uh, because it gives me an opportunity to to learn uh, what uh, the community is doing to all the different scientists and innovators are doing on a daily to help uh, uh, alleviate uh, different challenges that societies are facing at uh, relatively low cost or no cost at all. Uh, so uh, it gives me hope uh, working with such a, a community or such individuals that are dedicating themselves to their lives and uh, talents to solving uh, current uh, challenges that the world is facing. So basically why I want to join uh, the community is because uh, 
I have experience in communication, and I realized we have a few communicators uh, on the in the community. So I hope uh, me being a part of the community will uh, inspire other people <laughs> to join the community. And uh, yes, and I look forward to working with the different talents that we have and learn more as well. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Awesome. I'm just admitting one more person into the room really quick. Great. All right. Cool. Next up on my screen is Yorgo. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So hi, everyone. Very happy to be here um, today. So my name is Yorgo. I'm a biologist, software developer uh, by training. I'm originally from Lebanon and based in France. And for the past two years, I've been working as a community program coordinator at iGEM, which is the International Genetically Engineered Machine Foundation. And our main goal is to work on developing a symbio or synthetic biology a community through education, competition, and a variety of programs. Uh, I also spend a lot of time working around biosafety and biosecurity. And I first heard about uh, GOSH last year uh, when we got the chance to get the funding from GOSH actually to organize an event in Latin America around open science and accessibility, which is one of the topics that we invest in as well. And then I got to um, join the Africa GOSH community calls and that's when the idea stemmed of like uh, bringing in the iGEM and the Africa GOSH community to see how we can work together on common ideas and uh, around open science and accessibility. So one of the ideas that I want to really work in uh, and hope to implement through GOSH is how we can reinforce uh, collaborations with uh, like, like-minded like organizations such as iGEM or Effective Altruism or many other organizations who work around the same topics or around them in different parts of the world to see how we can uh, like increase uh, GOSH's impact and how we can bring uh, discussions around open policies and the the responsible advancement of open science and uh, and hardware. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, again, really happy to be here, and I'm sure that uh, I can learn a lot from just being on this call. Thank you. Great, thank you, Yorgo. I believe Mustafa has joined us now as well. Um, Mustafa, I know you joined a couple minutes late, so I will just go ahead and fill you in. Right now we are doing candidate statements. So each candidate has up to two minutes to give a brief statement. Um, you can either read your candidate statement aloud or just share a little bit more about um, what your objectives are as being a council person. Uh, so yeah, if you would like to use this time uh, to give a two minute statement, uh, please feel free and I'll send you a message when you have 10 seconds to go. Uh, but yeah, Mustafa, if you're able to give your statement, that would be fantastic. All right, Raina, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Yes, as you rightly mentioned, my name is Dauda Mustafa and I am based in Ghana, West Africa and also a member of African Ocean, Ghana, Africa. I am a hardware engineer, uh, particularly in biomedical engineering, but I have skills in vast area in open science hardware, in electronics and mechanical engineering as well. Over the past few years, I and my organization, which is Noni Hub, and we, we've been working on open science hardware for quite some time now. Through that, we established our maker space where we teach uh, open science hardware, as well as developing rapid prototypes in open science hardware as well. So we've, we've, we've done a lot, a couple of projects ranging from smart agriculture systems to smart home automations. So the goal for our maker space is not to establish a space where we only prototype stuff, but also a space where young enthusiasts can also come in with the ideas and then we help guide them to put the idea into a product, as well as trying to push the open science hardware in the community where we live. We 
that we've had, we've trained almost about 200 people for the past two years when we relocated to the northern part of the country. And we look forward to collaborate with like-minded organizations, uh, stakeholders who are involved in open science, so we could all share knowledge and help push the open hardware agenda all together. So this is very brief about me. I know I have more, but I'll keep it here because of time. And uh, in due time, I will uh, talk more about myself. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. And thank you to all the candidates who gave a statement. I'm just checking the list of participants again to make sure that I called on everyone. And yep, I think that's all of our candidates for today. So yeah, thank you again for sharing your statements. I would now like to open it up uh, to community members. So now we can go into the question and answer part of this meeting. Uh, so if community members would like to ask candidates questions, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. You can either ask individual candidates a question about themselves, or you can pose a question to the group. If you'd like to ask a question, you can do so in three ways. Uh, raise your hand on video or use the Zoom raise your hand feature. Uh, you can type your question into the chat and I'll read it out loud or you can type the question into our shared notes document, which I sent earlier, and I will share again here in case we need it. There we go. So yeah, feel free now to share any questions you have with the candidates. Um, oh, quick note, candidates will have up to a minute to respond, and I will prompt those uh, to comment as well. So I will send you a message too when you've got about 10 seconds left uh, on responding to your question. So yeah, any questions from the community? I know we have a couple people with their cameras off, so I will give you some time to type questions into the chat as well. Cool. All right, I already see two questions in the chat. The first is from Liz. So Liz would like to ask the candidates to please share an experience of listening to their previous communities and surprising breakthroughs that have happened. So what, are there any candidates that would like to answer Liz's question? Carl? Yes, uh, so Liz, thanks. Thank you for very much for that question. So I have served on in a couple of communities before, uh, but the most recent one was um, we we're establishing an open library in Uganda and we're trying to bring publishers together. So I served on that committee and I was my role was there was to listen to the different concerns from different researchers as to why they're not unable to access the different research uh, products from especially the global north and uh, gather them and uh, distill and compile uh, uh, like a, a reference uh, notebook and also in consultation with we are able to utilize that to apply for funding from uh, an NGO called in in, a, in the UK and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, that community is still thriving and they are soon launching a, a platform. So um, I'm very experienced. I guess th that experience counts in a way. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Any other candidates that would like to respond to that question? Anna? Um, thank you, Liz, for the question. So as experience of listening to the community, um, I believe that we gather a lot of information um, from the participants uh, for the gathering of last year. Um, and this came with uh, surprising outcomes um, for the gathering, for instance, um, something that maybe not really out of the radar, but was very requested was the field trip and um, inclusion for food like vegetarian or vegan food. So that's something that we had to plan and work around it. Uh, and it came 
good. I feel like uh, a lot of the participants were satisfied with the field trip. We got comments um, about the food and in general with the organization, I think the community um, of the assistance was, was involved. Thank you, Anna. Any other candidates that would like to comment on Liz's question? Yes, Liz? so. Yeah, perfect. Yes, so with our side, uh, I think we had a community of uh, ladies, girls who uh, you know, when we moved to the northern part of our country, these were girls who had no interest, I mean, or even had little knowledge in hardware. So when we established our organization and they happened to visit us, uh, one, they are, these are, they are organized group actually. So they shared with us how we can help push this hardware agenda and include girls or females. So I think we, we listen to them and then uh, we take into consideration with what they were telling us because they highlighted a lot of uh, reasons why they would want to in include uh, ladies in open science hardware. So we thought it's wise that let's bring them on board. And this organization that we brought on board uh, particularly, I think they were able to bring more organized group of females who we organized this digital fabrication for them and also introduce them to a lot of hardware trainings. And, you know, it, it's a whole long story short, but then this was something we had and then acted upon for them. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Any other candidates that would like to respond? Yorgo? Yeah, so um, so within the scope of iGEM, we organize the, like, the competition every year, and that involves like uh, around 300 teams. And during COVID, what happened is that a lot of teams were unable to access uh, labs to, to implement their projects. So what we had to do from the from the from the iGEM side, from the organizing side, is we we organize like a lot of calls with the with the teams to understand their challenges and like what how they need to to proceed with their projects, and that directly fed into the rubric of the competition, how we like judge the teams and how we make sure that it's still uh, a valuable experience for them without necessarily like putting them down because of accessibility questions. Um, so yeah, I think that was one of the key. Uh, Turn, turning points uh, within the history of the competition. Uh, so yeah, we were able to to talk to to a global community to understand in different regions how COVID affected the question of accessibility. Uh, yeah, I think that was a very nice experience and it changed a lot of things. Thank you, Yorgo. I believe that was every candidate that responded to Liz's question. Uh, thank you, Liz, for that question. Uh, next, I have a question from Harold. Harold, first of all, says thank you all for being here. And Harold would like to ask the candidates, what is your experience with science hardware, open or otherwise, uh, or in your formal work or personally? So yes, are there any candidates that would like to answer Harold's question? Yes, yeah, so for me, my experience working with open uh, hardware has really taught me a lot of uh, lessons. Not, uh, it, it, it has actually bring me to close to a lot of diverse groups of people uh, working together on different ideas. I've met people who are working on so many ideas that I've never met before. We share skills and also knowledge. And above all, the coercion between open hardware enthusiasts, uh, it's, it's something that was uh, an experience that I learned as well. Yeah. Thank you, Mustafa. Any other candidates that would like to answer Harold's question? Carl? 
Uh, yes, Harold, thanks so much for the question. Uh, so um, last two years, I or three years or so years back, I used to work with a government agency back in Uganda, uh, Science National Council for Science and Technology. And in my role as a uh, an outreach officer, I was also entitled with uh, rather required to manage uh, micro grants. So in a way, I was working with innovators, providing them with uh, uh, a few funding to develop their skills. This is how I got introduced to people, young engineers that are working to fix uh, local, rather used up like computers or gadgets and make fix them or make make them use the different components to make other products out of them. So in the process, I was introduced to a community of open hardware. I hope that applies because now there is a young community of agencies that works called the Fundibots, work with, it trains young people to fix different gadgets. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Any other candidates that would like to answer Harold's question? Yorgo? Uh, yeah, so on my side, uh, on one part, um, I've been invested in the education and awareness part of things. So we focus on the open science and accessibility topic uh, within iGEM. And through that, we host like a variety of uh, trainings where we host experts around uh, the topic of open software, open hardware, and stuff like that. Um, so it's mainly overseeing different projects that try to implement uh, open science. So that was one of the examples. Uh, the other part is I actually was involved in projects uh, to develop open software and how to make it accessible to uh, a variety of people. And it was mainly through research, automation, and exploring different platforms to make it uh, the most uh, accessible. Thank you, sorry. You're good. Thank you, Yorgo. I was capturing that last thought in the notes. Um, yes, any other candidates that would like to answer Harold's question? Great. I will go ahead and move on then to any other questions. Does anyone else from the community have a question? I see Liz has put another one into the chat. Uh, so Liz has asked, can you share an example of when you learned something new and then changed your mind? Uh, she said, for, in for instance, perhaps you may have observed or encountered something that shed a new light on an assumption you may have had about other people, institutions, uh, social values, or belief systems. Uh, she says why she's asking this question. She's interested in understanding to what degree candidates are equipped to do uh, the high amount of learning that will be part of representing a global community that includes people the candidates have not yet met. Uh, so yes, the question again is sharing an example of when you learned something new and then changed your mind. Is there any candidates that would like to answer this question? Anna? Um, okay, so in regards to this question, which is great, thank you, Liz. Um, I have the opportunity to take uh, the PMI test and be part of the PMI certification. And there, while studying, uh, processes, they seem to be the most important um, activity that we can do at the moment of planning for a project, a gathering, a situation, or anything. However, uh, with the experience of last year, I've noticed that, yes, processes are very important to streamline um, information or um, activities. However, um, since the community was so involved and every voice was heard, it really made me think and reshift my mind to see that um, people are more important than processes. So, and then when learning about the manifesto, it came to, for me, it came to, to have a lot of sense, right? To have a democratic um, uh, group of people that make decisions based on people, basically. 
So yeah, it was interesting to make that shift of mind from processes um, to people. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Any other candidates that would like to answer Liz's question, Mustafa? Yes, yeah, so for my part, from my perspective, uh, the part of the country we are situated in, you know, we are made to believe that ladies especially are not meant for hard work. You know, so it's a general belief, yeah. So you, you, you barely don't see ladies in open science or engineering related fields, even in academia. So it's something that has been with us for a very long time until we began uh, pushing this open hardware community and the community of making, uh, this culture of making to them. And uh, I think uh, we had it wrong. We had it wrong because the reason was that people or people around here or the ladies around here never had places to go and then have uh, experience on open science hardware or engineering or science related disciplines in academia. So once we did that, we realized the enthusiasm and even uh, we had the best makers coming from the uh, the ladies side uh, last year when we organized the hackathon. So it actually changed my belief or our belief in the fact that ladies are not really meant to be into this hardware or science related field here. And it's, it's worked for us for the past few years since we've been operating. Thank you, Mustafa. Any other candidates that would like to answer Liz's question? Yorgo. Yes, now I think I know how to answer the question. So um, within, within the work uh, that I do basically around biosafety and biosecurity, I had the chance to, to attend one of the meetings around uh, the bio group discussion. So all states parties meet to negotiate about this convention and as a scientist whenever you go in you think like why why are the negotiations stuck like why don't we talk a lot about science and technology within this framework of the the convention um and whenever you you witness the discussions and how they go we you you see that the assumption was always that they should do this they should talk about this uh, but what what we actually see is that there's a lot of political challenges that prevent them from talking about science and technology and it's not it's not very easy to um to to move forward without uh, moving like moving away from these uh, political challenges so the the idea is we always assume that scientists that they should do this and they're not aware and they don't know what they're doing when it comes to science but they are actually aware but the main challenge is that how to get over these political issues and whenever you um, you go to these meetings, it's very interesting to see this happening, and it changed a lot of the perceptions that you had um, along the other years. Yeah. Thank you, Yorgo. Any other candidates that would like to answer Liz's question? Carl. Um. Thank you, Liz. Um. For the interesting question. So I'll. For the, during the COVID pandemic, I was lucky or fortunate enough to be working with the team that was supporting government with the health communications, you know, you know helping the public to stay sane and keep, keeping the promises high. Um, so while we're designing most of these uh, messages and experts we had in the room, all of us had ignored uh, uh, the power of the cultural leaders because Normally, no one recognizes them, recognizes them, because they don't know where in the institutions and where. But uh, along the way, as we're designing messages and sending them out and to, on radios and television, we kept receiving negative feedbacks and people are not responding well, and we didn't know what was going wrong. So we had to sit down and figure out why. That's it. Struck me so hard how people are so attached to the to their culture leaders or to their culture. It took us uh, just 
um, a few calls to speak to different cultural leaders, like four, 40 of them, and for them to interpret these messages to the, the different publics of their communities. And we started having a serious conversations about uh, about what was going on and positive feedback. So that changed my mind and perception about uh, undermining the different subgroups that uh, really turn out to be powerful in a way. Yeah, I hope that works. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Any other questions from community members? I believe we heard from every candidate now on that topic. So yeah, are there any other questions that anyone would like to ask? I don't see any in the chat, but I do have one. Um, so I would like to ask all of the candidates. Um, oh, Liz does have one. Um, is it okay, Liz, if I ask my question, then I can get to yours. And if Harold has one, I'll check the chat too. Perfect. Cool. All right. My question for candidates is, what is your top priority in your mind if you get elected? So what's your top priority for the community? And yeah, I open it up to candidates. Is there anyone that would like to go first? I can go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so my top priority, if I, I get onto the, the, the leadership as one of the leadership positions, uh, I really want to focus on uh, the power of uh, collaboration within the community. I would like to see more people working together. I like to see more joint products coming out of the community. Uh, yes, I understand. I know we have grown so much as individuals, as support different products, different regions. So I'd like to see like regions working together, different networks working together. Yes, I would like to see that happen. Thank you, Carl. Any other candidates that would like to answer that question? Yorgo? Yeah, I think I can second card on the collaboration aspect in the sense of um, like explore how we can make solid collaborations with like-minded organizations, but as well how we can uh, highlight the fact that we empower youth uh, in different regions of the world. Uh, so we, have, we, we can see like across the globe that we have like youth for health, youth for disarmament, youth for different things. And just to to highlight and to to make it like more impactful how we can explore that aspect of empowering youth and um yeah how we can sell it as a as a platform as well to empower youth that would like to work or join around the topic of open science accessibility and open open hardware thank you yoro uh, mustafa Okay, so thank you very much. Sorry, I had uh, a net, some bit of network failure here. Yeah, so my top priority is to build a community of makers where I'll have a lot of female engineers and innovators coming up from this community who would like to inspire uh, community, their communities and then also influence drastic change, really, really drastic change in our localities because we have a lot of problems to deal with here in Africa and uh, my country is also one so by building a community of thinkers and people who can solve problems I think we can achieve our goal aside that collaboration and networking is something that uh, should also fuel this for us yes thank you Mustafa any other candidates Anna Okay, so definitely um, accessibility and distribution and communication is probably very important. That will be uh, the focus that I feel um, are the top priorities. Um, having spread the voice about the community um, uh, is basically like the way to democratize um, 
and make accessible all the tools that Gosh has to offer. So definitely communication, spread the voice, um, and because I feel like the tools are very accessible. So and it's a very ethical concept. Um, but yeah, I feel like that spreading the voice is a is a part that I can help with. It. Thank you, Anna. I believe that was everyone that answered that question. So I don't see a question from Harold. So Liz, if you want to ask your question, please feel free. All right, so the next question from Liz is, what does representation mean to you? How will you know you're doing a good job as a council member and what does success look like? Uh, to jumpstart this, consider that being an elected representative might be about you and your individual judgment, about listening to your constituents and bringing their voices into, into or to help form your judgment, a symbolic role that places a representative from a specific community and a highly visible position, about pushing power outward so that many more people can coordinate work towards community goals. Uh, so that was a list, but it is not inclusive. So again, uh, Liz's question was, what does representation mean to you? And how will you know you're doing a good job as a council member and what success looks like? Any candidates that would like to answer and feel free to take a minute or two if you need to think a little more. Anna? So in regards to representation, um, we're definitely, each people, each of us have their own lens on life and what's good or bad. Um, but most importantly is to maintain, um, to be open to listen to other people's opinion, be respectful about it and always analyze it since a positive point of view. Um, for instance, uh, one example I can give is um, just to understand that people have different upbringings, that no one is bad per se or has a bad attitude or a bad opinion. Um, so for me, representation, inclusion means to try to, to look has um, my ambition of life and to understand what other person that I might know nothing or much about is trying to say always um, with good intention. So communication, um, discussions, talk to people, um, especially in an environment where everyone is around the world is, is important. So yeah communication, try to understand what people are coming from, what they're actually really trying to say. I feel like we humans, as a basis, we always want to help. So try to understand from that point of view, like what is this person trying to bring to the table? Um, so yeah, thanks. Thank you, Anna. Any other candidates that would like to answer Liz's question? Carl? Oh, sorry, I still got traditional with raising the arm rather than using the icons. <laughs> uh, yeah, Liz, thank you again. Okay, to me, representation means um, I interpret representation as uh, the ability to accommodate different, uh, ability to accommodate different views from different people, accept diversity. We all come from different regions as, or different parts of the world. Have diff we are creative differently. So as a, a leader, I mean, you're open to different views, different opinions, regardless of how they come in. You know, sometimes we express views differently. But as a leader, it's 
it's important to focus on the positive. Uh, so listen to the criticism, the good and the bad, and see out what is best for the community. Because by the time that criticism comes through, you're even lucky that it's coming through. So the ability that you're receiving that kind of uh, criticism, is, uh, to me, that's a bit of a, a good way to represent a, com a community. So, and to me, measuring how, if to know, do I know that I'm a, a good job? doing good at a job as a council member. Yeah, getting feedback. The fact that you get feedback from 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 the community is really is really important because that's the only way for you to improve. If you're not getting feedback, if uh, in that does not help the community grow and you as an individual, you stay for development of the community. So I see as a success and as I'll be doing my good a good job. Thank you, Carl. Um, any other candidates that would like to respond to Liz's question, Yorgo? Uh, yes. So I think to complement what uh, what Anna and Carl already said, uh, it's also about figure out how to um to adopt like a holistic approach whenever we do everything. So you always need the um the lawyer, the scientist, the engineer, the the artist, the uh the young the young mind the senior mind to like to to implement or to move forward with everything that you're doing i think that's what representation is to me and of course different regions different you need the the person from africa from the middle east from north america from south america to bring in different perspectives and to bring in if we talk about challenges to to talk about the challenges that they faced whenever we talk about open science and, and accessibility to make sure that we stay relevant to what we're doing um yeah and about how to um about feedback i would say like get honest feedback while staying uh respectful like i don't mind if someone comes in and tell me like hey that's that's wrong that's right but be honest whenever we work with each other and of course like stay respectful uh whenever we work with each other as well yeah that's that's about it Thank you, Yorga. Any other candidates that would like to answer Liz's question? Cool. If not, we have one more question from Harold. So question, or Harold actually um, wants to know if candidates have any questions they'd like to ask the council. Um, so if you now that you have the opportunity, uh, what questions would you like to ask council members? So they're not looking for answers, just would like to know any questions you have. Uh, so yeah, candidates, are there any questions you have for the council? Carl, yeah. yeah. Yeah, plenty, Harold. <laughs> Thank you. I have plenty of questions for the council, and I'll just stick to two. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, ask, to engage with us again. So in case uh, I make it, uh, or one of us makes it to the, the new council, what I understand you've been working on, on the constitution and the number of pro uh, the projects you've been working on. What would be your recommendation on like the first items that you would like the new council to to handle. I mean, we have all made premises on what we want to achieve, but you being in a position that you're in now, you would be in the best position to 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 advise on what would be the uh, the most urgent aspects that we should the new coming council should be dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Any other questions that candidates have for the council? Yorgo? Yeah, I think it's very similar to Carl, as in like, what are the expectations for new people who are joining the council and what are the priorities for GOSH moving forward, at least like for the upcoming year? Like, what do you think is essential for GOSH, uh, for GOSH sorry, to, to grow as a, uh, as a community to, to make sure we stay relevant to what's happening uh, around us? Thank you, Yorgo. Any other questions that candidates have for the council? Anna? Um, in my case, um, what was the biggest challenge that was presented 
like a, a brief explanation of the situation. What was the outcome and how it came to that defined resolution? Thank you, Anna. Any other questions that candidates have for the council? All right, I do not think there are any more. Oh, Carl, yeah. Just one more. Uh, I, uh, being a community as well, I mean, the council alone is a, a micro community and at times uh, when you bring a, a group of people together from different uh, parts of the world, not everyone usually attends, uh, like for example, the meetings as required. So my question would be to the outgoing council, what, what kind of challenges were they facing and uh, how are they able to, to mitigate them in case they didn't meet quorum, for example? And uh, how did that affect decision make decision making? And how what advice would they have for the incoming council now to deal with such situations in case they arose? Okay. Thank you, Carl. I was just adding that to the notes as well. Um, if any other candidates have questions, please raise your hand, and I will call on you. I do just want to highlight Liz's comment into the chat that the council is planning a transition meeting for the incoming council. Uh, and all of these all of these questions will be documented and shared publicly on the forum. Uh, so yes, uh, thank you, Liz, for that clarification. Um, I do wanna be mindful of time. We've got a little less than 10 minutes. I don't see any more questions in the chat. So I think we are getting close to a point of wrapping up for today. Uh, so yes, I do just wanna say thank you to everyone who was able to make it. Thank you to our community members and thank you to our candidates uh, who joined today, shared their statements and also answered questions from the community. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. It's always fantastic to learn more about you all and to learn more about our candidates that would like to run for community council. Um, I do wanna say if there's any questions you haven't gotten to ask candidates, uh, specifically if there's individual questions that you wanna to ask to an individual, um, I suggest responding to their candidate statement on the forum uh, so that they get a chance to respond to that. Uh, again, the election is super important uh, to the GOSH community, so please make sure you have registered to vote uh, and also encourage other GOSH community members to register to vote as well. Uh, I'm going to share a registration link into the chat along with more information on the 2023 election so that you all can access it. Great. That has been posted into the chat. So yes, I definitely suggest uh, registering. Well, I definitely encourage you to register, but also just checking out uh, more information about the current community council election. And with that, I think we are good to go and we can go ahead and adjourn for today. Uh, thank you to our candidates and to our community members again for coming. It's always lovely to see you all and enjoy the rest of your day, whatever time it may be on your side of the world. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you and good luck, everyone. Bye. Bye.